I think they just arrived. Thank 
But thank God he's doing better. Yeah, he's at the house, at the parsonage. Come over and holler at him. Um, are you, um, I know they were trying to get up with you earlier to be on the program. I am? Well, they, they, they couldn't get you. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, but, um, would you... I would like for you, since you came all this way, I definitely want you to be part of it. We'll let you. I'm looking for one too.
Um, hold on. Help me to hold my hat. You ready? Come on, come on. Let me get an announcement. Okay. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? We will now start the services. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will offer her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy to be praised. Yes, is. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We're going to be blessed with our invocation by Reverend Paul Sewell. May we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this moment we've gathered together. Bless this family now as they go through these moments of condolences. Have mercy, Lord. Let everything we say and do now be done according to your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll sing one verse of Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song praising my savior this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long amen. amen let the church say amen. amen amen we'll be blessed with the reading of the holy scriptures by mr lorenzo mcdowell old testament new testament county commissioner mr michael cogdale followed by prayer of consolation reverend emily brunson Uh, good afternoon. The scripture will be the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteous for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shallow death, I feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rods, thy staff, they comfort me. Uh, that I prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be reading John 14, verses 1 through 4. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If there were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Reading the scripture, thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, there is a season and a time for everything in this world. Today you have granted us a chance to celebrate the life of our loved one, Miss Esther Huntley. And we want to say thank you. Even though we are finding it hard to accept this, we know that everything works together for good for those that love the Lord. Father, give us the peace that surpasses all understanding as we start this homegoing service, give us the strength to share 
the beautiful moments that we share with our loved one, Miss Esther Huntley, our beloved departed. We ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. May he bring comfort to every one of us so that we can be able to moan as believers. Holy Spirit, take full control and help us to do this as unto God and not as unto ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Certainly we have come today to celebrate the life of Miss Esther Huntley, one who has lived a life to the fullest, one who God has blessed, had blessed for 99 years. Can I get a witness, somebody? Amen. That within itself shows that she was doing something right. Amen. She lived far beyond the promise. And today you have come the witness of her, her love, and all that she gave to this community and to her family. So we are so grateful today to the Huntley family for allowing us this private time to share with you during your time of bereavement. Know that earth has no sorrow that heaven can not heal. We're going to be blessed now as we have our acknowledgments and obituary by Ms. Althea McAllister, followed with reflections, Karen Huntley Caleb, Caleb Kellum, uh, family, Mr. Akil Cooper, friends, Ms. Theresa Wright, Ms. Shireen Riggins, and then from the church, her class leader, Ms. Althea McAllister. Thank you. I would first like to read the um, acknowledgement the family of Ms. Esther Huntley is sincerely grateful for the many acts of kindness shown during our time of bereavement. In lieu of flowers, the family of Ms. Huntley is humbly requesting donations to be made to the North Carolina A&T Foundation Incorporated, designated for the Esther May Huntley Memorial Scholarship, care of North Carolina A&T State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. I shall read the obituary and then I'll follow with just the reading of a few cards that were chosen by the family. <laughs> the memorable life of Esther May McNeil Huntley came to a peaceful end. Sorry. Came to a peaceful end. Gracious, this wind is something. On January 11th, 2021. Esther was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina on May 7, 1921 to the late Rufus and Margaret McNeil of Elizabethtown, North Carolina. Ms. Huntley graduated from the illustrious North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in 1944 with a degree in home economics. During her time there, she became a member of Zeta Phi Beta, Beta Sorority Incorporated. Upon graduation, she went to New York where she worked in retail and eventually landed a job with Head Start. She became a true crusader for Head Start, helping them start up many facilities and implementing the Head Start program throughout New York. In 1947, while in New York, she married Floyd Huntley, with whom she had twin daughters, Micheline and Frances. In the mid 50s, she went back to Elizabethtown, North Carolina, there she met Robert Lee Cromartie, with whom she gave birth to Karen. In 1957, Ms. Huntley opened the historical landmark Rainbow Nursery School, the first licensed daycare facility in Bladen and surrounding counties. She became an influential black businesswoman. In order to sustain her business, she traveled between New York and North Carolina working to support her family and business. In 1972, she permanently settled down in Elizabethtown and continued operating her daycare. She served as the role model for the Bladen County daycare system, helping others to open their own facilities. She also worked for the North Carolina state government during this time. In 1979, she became the first black female elected to serve on Elizabethtown city council. As a member, she served two consecutive terms. 
Ms. Huntley was active in her community throughout her life. She was a member of Mount Zion AME Zion Church in Elizabethtown, the National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials, the League of Municip Municipalities, National Association for the Education of Young Children, and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP. Ms. Huntley was Bladen County pioneer when it came to child care, politics, and travel. She was truly a woman ahead of her time. She believed in exposing everyone to all the world had to offer outside of Bladen County and loved educating and caring for all children. She played a crucial role in the education and success of thousands of children. It was her belief that love, reading, and an education were the keys to success, and every child deserved that chance. May the work I've done speak for me. She leaves to forever remember her. Her children, Micheline Huntley of Lagos, Portugal, Frances Huntley Cooper and her husband Alfonso of Fitchburg, Wisconsin, Karen Huntley and her husband Arthur of Spring Lake, North Carolina, grandchildren, Ica McElvin and Freddie of Elizabethtown, Akil J. Cooper of Wanaka, Wanaki, Wisconsin, Hasina Davidson and her husband Jason of Mooresville, North Carolina, great-grandchildren, Frederiana McElvin Martin, Trent of Modesto, California, Maisha Cooper of Gerald and Gerald of Fayetteville, North Carolina, Tavonda McElvin of Fayetteville, North Carolina, Tyrese McElvin of Elizabethtown, North Carolina, Tatiana McElvin of Elizabethtown, North Carolina, excuse me, the wind is, Jair McElvin of Elizabethtown, North Carolina, Saeed McElvin of Elizabethtown, Akil M. Cooper of Madison, Wisconsin, Kaden, Kaden Cooper, Kaden Cooper of Madison, Wisconsin, Amira Davidson of Mooresville, and Zariah Davidson, also of Mooresville, North Carolina. Great grandchildren, Gabriel Martin of Modesto, California. She will be remembered lovingly by a host of relatives and friends who will forever treasure the indelible impacts she made on their lives. Um, I shall read just a, a few of the cards that the family has re received and that they chose to have read. Mm. Please forgive me, the wind is really kicking. Five things God wants you to remember in trying times. You're never, ever alone. Nothing takes him by surprise. When you're weak, he's strong. He's the God of new beginnings. His love never gives up on us. Trusting him to carry you through. Commissioner Bullock and Elizabeth Bullock. Just as the sun will set, then rise, with each, excuse me, please, with each and every dawn, the souls of those who lived life well eternally live on. Now that the sun has seemed to set on one so very dear, please know a soul who lived so well remains forever near with heartfelt sympathy from yours truly. truly. God is near you in your time of loss. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made ooh, heaven and earth. May you know his, may you know his faithfulness enduring during this time of difficult time. Flala Marine. Thank you. There is a tender touch of the Lord given to us in our times of loss. It's a touch that wipes away tears and comforts our sorrows. It's a healing touch by His Spirit that gently draws us under the shelter of His wings. And this is from Bishop James Bowman and Temple Rock Church family. leave this earth, the love that we've given and received remains behind to light the lives of those we touched, each memory, a candle burning bright. This is from Vera L. Melvin. 
creation. When? With deeper sympathy to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. This is from the Bladen County Training School, Bladen County High, Central High School Alumni Association, Dorothy McCoy, President. May the love of God give you peace. May the caring of friends give you comfort. This is from all of us, your family, and their names are Misty, Cheryl, and Aquila Jacobs. Thank you. This is from the Zeta Phi Beta sorority. My mother was not just my mother, she was also my sister. I'm a Zeta as well. This plaque of resolution has come from, and I'm gonna read it to you. The Zeta Phi Beta sorority incorporated, state of North Carolina, resolution, Esther May McNeil Huntley. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the, thy Lord, Matthew 25, 21. Whereas the International Executive Board, Eastern Region, State of North Carolina, and the Sisterhood of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated have suffered a deep loss in the home going of Sarah Esther May McNeil Huntley. Whereas a member of the Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated founded on the campus of Howard University January the 16th, 1920. She joined the sorority in 1944 by way of the Zeta Alpha chapter of North Carolina Agriculture and Technical University in Greensboro, North Carolina. Sara Huntley held a degree in early childhood education and owned the Rainbow Nursery School located in Elizabethtown, North Carolina. Sara Huntley was faithful and dependable, devoted to the principles for which our sorority stands. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the North Carolina State Executive Board and the entire membership of the state with Zeta women everywhere concurring that we do hereby commend and honor the life and accomplishments of Sarah Esther Huntley. Therefore, be it resolved that even in your time of loss, God will sustain you and your family. We pledge ourselves to cherish her memory to emulate her life of devotion and service. Come unto me, all ye that labor and all are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Therefore, be it further resolved this 16th day of January, 2021, that an authentic copy of this resolution signed by the North Carolina State Director be submitted to the family of Sarah Esther May McNeil Huntley. May you all find hope, comfort, and peace in the days ahead. Sorrowfully submitted, Valerie Sinclair, North Carolina State Director. And this was, okay, Whew. all right, thank you. First of all, I, I just want to say what an honor, what an honor it is to, uh, to be able to speak on my, my grandmother. Uh, 
for the family. There are so many people that uh, could, could do this in our family. There are so many amazing speakers. I mean, Huntley was a talker, and that has gone through the entire family. So um, when Ika asked me to, uh, you know, hey, do you want to speak? I said, sure. I, I will definitely speak on my grandmother. Um, I had no idea I'd be one of the only ones. I thought there were going to be more of us speaking. So I really feel like it's an honor. It's like, wow, Ika, thank you. Um, for some people that may not know me, uh, as I've been in Wisconsin for quite some time, um, you might be thinking, well, who is this guy speaking on his grandmother? Well, not only am I the grandson, I'm her favorite grandson. <laughs> and we know that because I'm her only grandson. So <laughs> um, I, I just want to say this has been my second flight of the year already. Um, I, 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 I was I was coming to see my grandmother uh, when I heard that she was not doing very well and I missed her by just a few hours I was here in town but I, I missed being able to hold her hand and say goodbye and you know my family uh, they, they spoke to me and they said well you know that's just that's not how she wanted you to see her and you know I I, I believe I just want to say I was I was happy to be here when that happened. I was happy to be with family when that happened. And I'm going to tell you who I believe Huntley is. And some of the things that I say about who Huntley is, it's the same things that, that you would say because the truth is the truth is the truth about, about who Huntley was. But I also got to tell you real quick who Huntley was not throughout her life. Huntley was not boo-boo the fool. Huntley was not your little friend, and Huntley was definitely not the one. Who Huntley was is Huntley was kind. She was considerate. She was courteous. She was respectful. She was tiny, but tough. We know that. She was hilariously funny. She was worldly. She was an activist. She was community. She was family. And my grandmother was a woman of tremendous faith. To all of us that are grieving right now, I know this is hard. There are tears. There will be more tears that will, that will, that will be here. But I'm gonna remind you that Huntley will always show up in our lives. When I say she was kind, I think about my trip here, coming on this trip, and I was on the bus, and I'm sitting there packing my bag, making sure I got everything, and the family comes up, and they, uh, you know, I could tell they need to sit down and immediately I, I get up and I offer my seat and they say thank you. And when I think about where I got that, when I think about where we got that, it's because Huntley was kind. She was tiny but tough. When I started coming to North Carolina, I know Huntley was short, but I was shorter. And when I started coming and I was acting up, I remember Huntley would get that switch. I don't know if anybody knows about that switch but she would get that switch and she would chase me around a little tree. And I don't know how she ended up caught, catching me, but when she caught me, she got me, all right? She was tiny but tough. She was hilariously funny. She had all kinds of side comments. And she had a trademark phrase that all of us know very, very well. Y'all are a trip, 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 trip. <laughs> and when you think about where she got trip, 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 it's because she had three amazing daughters, and I'm sure at some points they were a trip, trip, trip. <laughs> or how about when Huntley had that little camper, y'all, and she had those big pillows, and you can see her sitting on those pillows over the steering wheel. Like my memories of Huntley are, are tremendous. She was worldly. She was always traveling, always on the move. I know she was on a bunch of trips all over the world. And she took us to Myrtle Beach cruises. She took us to China. She took us to Hong Kong. She would never stop moving. Now that she has her wings, I know it's really on. She was an activist. Voting was important to her. I'm happy to say she would be happy to know I voted. And she would, she would make sure that you knew how important it was for black people to vote, for women to vote, and, she, and how hard people had to fight for that right. 
So something today people take for granted. We, we, in her memory, we won't take that for granted. She was community. To me, in my mind, Huntley was the Mecca for our family. She was our heartbeat. She was, when I think of Elizabethtown, I, I think of Huntley, a true queen, but she never sat above anybody else. She was with everyone. The Learning Center has been here as long as I can remember. And the way I observed Huntley, she was truly in her calling. It wasn't a, just a learning system, a, lear, a, a, a daycare. It was a true, one of the first learning sister centers you know, out there. And she made sure that those kids were well taken care of, had great meals, had great, you know, everything, the best of everything. And, um, you know, that, that's something you don't always see, but you saw that with my grandmother, our grandmother. I've been a lot of fun places, Great America, Disney World, but I gotta tell you, my best memories, the funnest times were in her learning center with those kids. Huntley was family. Four generations of us are here. This is where we really dive in and we see who Huntley was because Huntley had three daughters, has three daughters. She has the twins, Francis, my mom, who would be here today. And I know my mom loves her mom. I know my mom would be here, uh, but with COVID, she, she, she's, not, she's not on this trip, but, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for her as well. I know Aunt Micheline, the other twin, identical twins. She would be here as well, but she had, she had some uh, unfortunate things happen as well. Uh, and so, but she's here with us. I know those twins, those identical twins. I know they love their mom. Identical, but so different. And then there's Karen, another daughter. And, and all three of these daughters are so beautiful, so amazing, so, so different. But let me tell you how, how they show up with Huntley. Micheline, in her calling, teaching, traveling the world. Where did she get that from? That stems from my grandmother. My mother, uh, first, first and only African-American mayor in the state of Wisconsin. At one point, president of NAACP. You know, when you look at what my mother did, she is in her calling. And that also traces back to my grandmother. When I look at my Aunt Karen, and the way she took over that learning center at times. And she was in there, and she's one of the reasons I love that center. I love my Aunt Karen. And, and I look at her, and I see what she did, and she was in her calling. And the way that Aunt Karen stepped up and took care of Huntley for so many years, I am so appreciative, beyond appreciative, Karen. Your heart is so big. And I say that Micheline, the oldest, Francis, Second oldest by a few seconds, I would imagine. Karen, you three are, you three are that legacy for, for, for Huntley. And I know that she has passed all three of you that torch. You know, when I, when, I, when I look at the generations after that, my sister and everything that you've been able to do, you are for sure the legacy of Huntley. Ika, my cousin, you, you joke that I'm the, their favorite, but I'm just the favorite grandson. She, she loved all of us equally, I know that. She had a heart that big. And uh, what you have done with your family, Ike, is a tribute to Huntley. It's written all over your, your beautiful children. In the next generation, you are doing well. I know Huntley is proud. So it's important that we talk about family because this is Huntley's legacy that we're talking about. I just want everybody to know how proud I am about how all of us showed up in our ways for this celebration in our different unique ways, not just for her, but for each other. And I appreciate you showing up for me. Everybody that took care of Huntley in her final days in that nursing home, I, I wanna say thank you for, from our family because I'm sure that Huntley was not always easy. And the reason why is because that's not her natural element. She was always the caretaker. She was not you know, she wasn't used to people taking care of her. She was taking care of all of us. So as I wrap this up with this story, I want to tell you guys this. Being, 
being with Huntley have been some of the funnest days of my life. And I remember, I remember when uh, I was I was training with with my with my company at one point, and I came to North Carolina. And, and Huntley, at 95 years young, came out to came out to visit with me, and we were sitting in a hotel in North Carolina, and she was drinking her Heineken. And I asked her, I said, Huntley, where is the one place that you always wanted to go that you never got to go? And she said, the one place that I always wanted to go that I never got to go is Hawaii. And that was at 95 years old. And as she was drinking her Heineken, I thought about that. And I got home and I said, you know what? I'm gonna make this happen. And I called her up. And when I called Huntley up, I gotta I got tell you what she said. I called her, I said, Huntley, we're going to Hawaii. She goes, who's going to Hawaii? You and Crystal? I said, no, me, Crystal, and you, we're all going to Hawaii. She goes, how much money I gotta bring? I said, you don't gotta bring any money. Leave your purse at home. And on the other end of the phone, this is what my grandma said. <laughs> and when we got on that plane, and that plane took off, and I saw her grab that handle and she, and to, the, to the plane, she, she shook a little bit. And I said, Huntley, are you afraid to fly? And she said, yes. But that's how bad she wanted to go. And, and we had the time of our life and that is just one, one memory. And that was just one way I tried to pay her back and I never could match the giving that she gave me. We all tried, but she gave and she gave and she gave. So with that, everybody, I just want to say our family will never forget the way you danced, Huntley. We will never forget the way you smiled. We will never forget your laugh, the way you taught, your little hugs, and may you rest in heaven. We thank Akil for such a moving and stirring reflection upon his grandmother. And we're asking those of you that follow, Akil had that right because he's the only grandson and he's the favorite grandson. So we're asking you to limit your comments to two minutes. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Akil, we can, you should have just dropped the mic after you finished yeah. because yeah. you said everything that you needed to say. Yeah. Um, Ms. Huntley, she was truly a phenomenal woman um, and she will be missed, but her legacy is definitely already living on. Um, when I think about Ms. Huntley, I think about her in three ways. I think about Ms. Huntley, the phenomenal woman who did all the things that was read about, you know, the first licensed daycare in Bladen County, opening the Head Starts, you know, she did all of those things, but at the forefront of it, she was first a Christian mother who raised her children to have values. And she instilled the value of education in her children, and she gave them a platform in which they could go off and spread their wings and fly. And they're still flying high, and their children are flying high after them. So Huntley family just soar. When I think about Huntley as the servant, you know, member of AME uh, Mount Zion, the church here, she was uh, a member of the NAACP, the uh, National Black Caucus, all of those things that were read about. She did it and she did it well. And she knew that in order to do those things, she had to be strong, she had to be brave, she had to be, you know, an encourager and a pioneer. She used her power of presence, her knowledge, her expertise, her commitment, and she helped build bridges across social, racial, educational, and economic divides in the community. Then I think about Huntley and the legacy that she has. That legacy is sitting right here. That legacy 
is in each and every one of you. And then even to the last great grandson, that legacy is already, you know, just, just going much further than, than what she could have ever imagined. Ms. Huntley was an icon to Bladen County. When I think of her, the first thought that comes to my mind is Rainbow Nursery. She was a well-known pillar in the community. She stood up for truth and equality. She rubbed elbows with local and national politicians. She was not loud and demanding, but she was articulate and eloquent with her speech and demeanor. She knew how to use the power of influence to make necessary and important things happen in the community. Many people looked up to her because they could identify with the causes that she supported. There were others who did not, uh, who, there were others who took notice of her, not because they identified, but because they did not always support the causes so passionately. But regardless of what side of the aisle they stood on, they respected the woman and her causes because what she went after represented the realities in the community and in the nation, and she was all about that change. Huntley's life reflects a rich and dynamic legacy. Her accomplishments impacted her family and the community. Ms. Huntley will always be with us. It was first in her lifetime, now it's in our memories. So Huntley family, y'all carry on and accomplish great things. Thank you. Good evening. I'm gonna try to get through this, y'all. There are few people that can leave a legacy like Ms. Esther Huntley. Mrs. Huntley has been instrumental in teaching and molding the lives of so many children, including my daughter. Ms. Huntley was known for being firm but fair. She advocated for she advocated for all children and their parents that she encountered. Mrs. Huntley took a holistic approach to teaching and learning. She believed in addressing the social, ethical, and economic needs of Rainbow Nursery's children. I will forever cherish the lessons that I've learned from her. Miss Huntley, you are truly loved and will certainly be missed. I love you, Miss Huntley. Amen. I've been asked to speak a few words um, as Huntley, as we called her, was on my class. I was her class leader. Um, not only was she on my class, but she is our cousin. Her mother and my grandmother were sisters. So we're cousins too. But anyway, on behalf of the um, class that she was a member of, that I was the class leader, I. Um, visited her many times in the nursing home after she um, became a patient in the nursing home. And uh, she was always glad to see us until it got to the point, whoo, gracious, we don't want to do this. <laughs> until we got to the point where um, because of the coronavirus, we couldn't go in to visit her anymore. So we would go behind the restaurant, restaurant home to her window and she would come to the window and we, we she couldn't hear us and we couldn't hear her but we knew we were there and we would communicate with her that way after the um coronavirus got started but anyway i just wanted to say a few words on behalf of uh the class that she was on and that i was her class leader as well as her cousin thank you okay now next on the program is uh Miss Claudette McCoy is supposed to sing a selection, but she roped me in to coming up here with her. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. I'll do the best I can. And this song is so appropriate for hunting, and we call it hunting. No disrespect. Yeah, but well, that's, that's what, what we call it. Call it. Call it. Yeah. So we're gonna sing this song. Try to sing it for her. Tell the name. May the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing that can't be said. May the work I've done speak for me. May the life I lived speak for me. May the life I lived speak for me. Amen. May the work that I've done speak for me. All praises be to God the Father, to God the Son, and to God the Holy Ghost. To our visiting pastors, um, Ms. Huntley had the grace to serve under presiding elder A.D. Reverend Dr. A.D. Brown of the Goldsboro District and also Reverend Dr. Paul Sewell that is here today and our other distinguished guests that come here today to witness this homegoing celebration. Amen, let's say celebration. Amen, it's a homegoing celebration and we are grateful to God. I am humbled uh, and honored to be the one to stand here uh, today to have the final remarks and rights over Ms. Huntley and I'd like to say to Akil, where is he? Oh, yes, sir. We could have dropped the mic, as someone said, and we could have had a benediction. And I know that your grandmother is mighty proud because she poured something into you, and it came out today. And to God be the glory. So this, this evening, this afternoon, I won't be before you long because all the sentiments have been echoed. And what I'm about to say is pretty much what you've already said because if it's the truth, it's the truth. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Those of you that have to have your Bibles, if you would turn with me uh, to Esther, the fourth chapter, and the 14th verse, and I'll be dealing with part B. But it reads, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. 
Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer to thy precious bleeding side. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen to the family and to the twins who are not able to be here today and to Karen that is here and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Certainly you have a legacy to remember in your grandmother. Uh, in school, when the teacher told us that we had to write an essay, I would get up tight thinking I can't do this. I don't want to do it, but if I wanted to get that grade, I had to do it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so this, this, this afternoon as we come, I want to give you the definition of what dictionary.com says an essay is. It's a short literary composition of a particular theme or subject, usually in prose and generally analytic, speculative or interpretive. So this morning, just for a few minutes, I want to talk to you from the subject of Esther's essay. Esther's essay. This essay was not hard to write because she had already written her story. She'd already written her essay. She'd already lived her life, and it was evident by the comments that came forth today. I met Miss Esther a little over a year ago when I came to the Mount Zion, Amy Zion Church as pastor at Bladen Nursing Home. She was quite soft-smoking, petite, she did not say a lot, but was always glad to see us when we came. Oh, that I wish and I heard all the things that you all were saying, I got a little envious that I didn't get to know her from that perspective. But when I got there, she was always glad to see me, the deaconess, the missionaries. And if I had known some of these things about her that I've heard today, I could only imagine the kind of conversations we would have had, Ica. They would have been conversations about the days when she and Mayor Green from Bolton, who was the mayor of Bolton, they were both little petite women, but powerful. How they would go together to political functions and how they stood tall in the midst of the political arena. I would think about all the things that she's done to make an impact in this community and all what conversations we would have had and so this morning, before I go any further, I want to preference this message with Esther, the book of Esther. And those of you that don't know who the book of Esther is or what she's all about, I would admonish you that when you leave here today to go home and read about Esther. Esther was the Jewish queen of a Persian king by the name of Ahasuerus. And so she was in a place that God had placed her in such a time as this. Because there was a man by the name of Haman that wanted to annihilate all of the Jews. But God had placed her in a place of position. He placed her in a place where she had a voice. He placed her in a position where she had influence. And because of that, she was able to save her people. Can I get an amen? amen. And so as I continue with Esther's essay, Esther's education. Miss Esther was a champion for education, having graduated from North Carolina A&T University in Greensboro. And she just not, didn't go there just to study, but she got involved in extracurricular activities as, as, as well, as she was a member of the Divine Nine, being a member of Zeta Phi Beta sorority. After having graduated from A&T University, she wrote, relocated to the big city of New York, where she worked in retail but Labor found her passion in Head Start. She was instrumental in helping New York set up multiple facilities throughout the state, operating on the premise that a mine is a terrible thing to waste. Ms. Esther realized that your education was something that nobody could take away from you. She stressed that principle throughout her family with her children and grandchildren, creating a thirst for higher learning. Miss Esther continued to make her mark as she opened in Elizabethtown the first licensed daycare center in Bladen and surrounding counties in 1957, 
That was the year that I was born. At that time, it was called Rainbow Nursery School, now Kids in Motion, which is still operational, which it would be 64 years old later this year. That's phenomenal, wouldn't you agree? Down through the years, Miss Esther has made her impact upon society, planting seeds in the lives of those little ones that were in her daycare, producing teachers, nurses, doctors, judges, lawyers, and etc. Miss Esther Huntley had a passion for education. Esther's economy, and Miss Esther's economy, everybody was somebody special. And she wanted everybody to be exposed to the finer things in life. She was a travel agent in her own right, as Akil has already told us, planning trips for those who were interested in going, activities, taking them to places outside of the Bladen County and Elizabethtown community. She kept the community engaged. She was a trailblazer, not only in daycare, but in politics as well. She was the first black female elected to serve on Elizabethtown's city council. The impact that Ms. Esther had on the community echoes even after her death. As yesterday, she was honored with a parade downtown commemorating what she was and what she has done. Oh, Ms. Esther was small, petite, but she carried a big stick and she carried a big switch. She wasn't afraid. She spoke and those around took note. Miss Esther had influence. Miss Esther had voice. And when she spoke, people would listen. She did not state back. She was not afraid. She stood forth. She was bold. And she made everybody around her know that she was a force to be reckoned with. Esther's encouragement, and I'm about finished. One church member excitedly told me yesterday that Miss Esther did the things that most people only dreamed about. Just think about all the places that she traveled. And we would just sit back and say, I wish that I could go there. I, I want to go here. But she made it happen. Even at age 94, getting on a plane, going to Hawaii, in spite of her fears, Miss Esther made it happen. She wasn't one to stand in the corner. Uh, she wasn't one to sit down and sit back. But Miss Esther came out boldly. She had influence. She had impact. And she was an example. Miss Esther's daughter told me that they had to be in church on Sunday. Oh, what a directive. Oh, that we would have more parents that would ensure or make their children be in church on Sunday morning. I'm told by church members that Miss Esther sat on the second row to my left, and that was her pulpit, that was her corner. That was where she made it known that she was a witness for the Lord. It was that corner that went them when her health declined and she no longer could hold up her corner. But she left a lot of legacy to hold up her corner. She left a lot to stand forth in the community and be the voice for the black community. Miss Esther was the voice for the black community. She was one that would be during the civil rights era that would stand up and say, oh no, that's not going down. Not now, not today, not ever. And when I was preparing this message, I thought about Miss Esther and the climate that we're in now. I said, oh my God, what would she say? I know that she would be on the battlefield. I know that she would be ready to fight. I know that she'd be ready to stand up. And so we have to take on the example of Miss Esther and we have to remember all that she did. She loved community. She loved family. She loved children. So it behooves us to follow in her example. Oh, my father's children. One day, the day will come when you and I must both lay down our heads and never to get up again. But what will people say about us? 
Will somebody be holding a parade in our honor? Will someone have a big picture and a plaque of us? Will our sorority care so much about us after so many years that they will send a resolution? What will be said about us? Will we follow in the footsteps of Miss Esther Huntley and make our impact on society and be a voice and a person that will be reckoned with for the better of our community and for the betterment of our state and of our nation. We have a lot to remember. We have a lot to be thankful for because of all that Miss Esther Huntley has given us and how she has blessed us. The word of God for the people of God, if you believe it, say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for this preached message this morning. We thank you for the life of Miss Esther Huntley, God, as it's been echoed through the voices of so many this morning. So God, we thank you, Lord, as you continue to move upon the heart of this community, upon her family, upon her church, as we hold fast her memories to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. It's now time for the committal service. that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is cut down like a flower he fleeth as if it were a shadow and never continueth in one way in the midst of life we are in death of whom may we seek for succor but of thee O Lord for our sins are we justly displeased yet O Lord God most holy O Lord most mighty O holy and merciful Savior Deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge, eternal. Suffer us not at our last day, our last hour, for our pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of the departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last days and the life of the world to come. Though our Lord Jesus Christ, at whom second coming is gloriously, glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and make like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working thereby, he is able to do to, to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven said unto me, Right, from henceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all forevermore. In Jesus' name, let us say, At this time, we have, we recognize the immediate family with their loving memory candle. We want to represent, and they're going to have to represent for their, uh, for Miss Micheline, her daughter, Ica, receive the candle. And for her daughter, Frances, Kadeen, Kaden, Kaden, and Akil, Representing the family. And to her daughter, Ica, um, to, excuse me, to her daughter, Karen, right behind you, Ms. Karen. Receiving love and memory candle. And last but not least, behind the picture, to her granddaughter, Ica, representing the grandchildren, and love and memory candle. Her life will now lead through you for this day. We ask the immediate family to please exit uh, to the left. We have the releasing of the doves on the way to the car. On behalf of F.W. Newton & Sons, we thank you. Yeah. 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 Yep. 
Lucas. 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 You need a gas station to make a right. <laughs> I know you ain't sat up, stood up there all that time talking about me and didn't know who I was. <laughs> no, he just didn't know that. Uh -huh. Oh, you're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my face. You, 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 know, you know, I was showing them that. My, uh, Where my girl's at? Whitney. Yeah. Is in. Uh, Where? Durham. Okay. You know, Miss Huntley trained her well, right? I know she did. She we, no, did. no, no. We trained her well. We almost got thrown out of school. <laughs> but she would be in primary school telling the teachers, uh, Dang what Miss I don't know y'all didn't meet my husband, but that's my husband right there. <laughs> she, she's at, uh, she uh, uh, works at Duke. Okay. And thank you very much. She's got two BAs, two masters, and get ready to go into Duke School Divinity. Shut up. Uh, I told right. her, I call her Miss Hartley all the time. I know you too. She keep her in her mouth. I said, but when she got in school, she said, we're going to get thrown out because you can't tell her what to go with Miss Hartley. But <laughs> well, she would do it. I know it. I know it. Thank you. You're looking beautiful. Good to see you. Take care of them babies. Oh, I will. Hey. Who is that's one of the twins. Oh, oh that's one girl. Oh, wow. Now, Aerosmith stands about five, 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 six. They got that what? from your daddy and your mama. Wow. Hey, Mikey. You take care of yourself. Okay, you tell her from my mom through me, do what she got to do, to do what she knows to do right. That's all I just tell people. Thank you. That's all I just, you know, I'm ministering for the... Bon dia, family. This is Micheline. And I'm so sorry that I wasn't physically with you um, as you said goodbye to mom today. But I did get a chance to watch the streaming. And uh, uh, it was very lovely. Uh, Kiel, excellent job. Whole family, excellent job. So as the matriarch now of the family, I would like to honor mom by attempting to bring the family together. And just like you watching this video, it's just that easy that we can communicate from one continent to another. Let's keep in mind, we're trying to bring this family together, which I would love to see. My grandkids uh, uh, don't know most of you. Um, it's not too late. It's no one's fault. We just need to work on everybody putting in equal, putting in effort so that we can have a relationship. Relationship is built on communication. And it's built by talking, having conversations, visiting, uh, speaking on the phone. Uh, sometimes we, we just have to do, make reach out, even though it may be difficult get, because of the time differences. But since I'm retired, I'm a little bit more flexible. So um, let's, let's give it a try. I would love to um, to get to know you because I, I I feel like uh, I don't know much about you and you don't know much about me. You're more than welcome that uh, invitation to visit. You're more than welcome when when and if that's possible. Uh, I hope that you'll consider it. All right. So with that in mind, uh, I want us to think about, and these are things that I'm working on. I'm trying to think what I can do to help is to make you out of the family. And I have to lead by example. So I've, already, I've worked on the reaching out, I'll continue to do that. Respect to me means the respect of differences. I'll be honest, sometimes I, I still, I have some problems trying to respect the differences and opinions, but I'm working on that. And so uh, please forgive me, but I'm, you know, it's hard when you have habits that you're trying to change. But I'm working on trying to show respect, and I need the way I can do that. I figure is by having a better um, relationship. We have to have better, deeper conversations. Um, ask questions. Be curious about each other, and to look at it from your perspective, or you look at it from my perspective, and accept it. And that's what my goal is. 
And I, I've always tried to be kind. And I've always tried to be grateful and to have um, gratitude with not just family, but friends, anybody that's helped me. Those are the things that have helped me survive. And and I'm, one reason I'm not alone today. Physically right now I'm alone because of COVID and because we have to I self-isolate and I'm doing that so that I can hopefully stay healthy. Um, so let's give that a try. Uh, it's always, we can always, can't worry about what happened yesterday. We have to think about today. And I look back here and I'm looking at, ooh, mom's, one of mom's favorite people, uh, President Barack Obama. I, real, I remember when she went to the inauguration and she brought me this throw blanket that's behind me when she came to visit me in Germany. She didn't trust the, uh, to, for it to be checked in, so she had it in a carry-on bag. So that's one of the stories. I have plenty more stories I'd like to share, fun stories of our time, the best three weeks that I spent with her. And I'm glad that I, 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 was like, that I gave her that opportunity. And she, you know, inspired me in many ways. Um, but in the end, we have to make our own decisions and respect it. All right, so I want to end by, like, I, want you, I want to end this message by saying, um, one of my favorite verses from the Bible is 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verses 4 through 5. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. And if we keep that in mind, and uh, we, we do make mistakes, but we just need to, it, it's just best to apologize and move on and see if we can fix things because we are not perfect. When we have uh, problems, we take them to the Lord and God forgives us. And um, so let's just work together. I love you all, and I hope to hear from you soon. Um, phone call, uh, video chats are, are wonderful. And you know what? Using your iPhone, it doesn't cost a dime. All right? Love you. And let's do this in mom's honor show we can be proud. Okay? We can make her proud, and we can have a better life. Uh, make it more meaningful, more blessed and uh, bless others with, uh, with our love. I love you, and I'm only, I think of you often.